We have a diversity of, of rivers across Nebraska and we have wetlands associated with every stream and river in the state. The thing that, that I find fascinating about wetlands and, and wetlands associated with rivers is the diversity and abundance of life that they support. So there's these amazing, green, vibrant places. There are three factors that, that make an area a wetland. The vegetation it'd like to grow in a place that's wet. And the second factor is the soils. And then the final factor is hydrology or the presence of water. And water doesn't have to be there all the time. Wetlands frequently go dry and they flood and they go dry again. The riverine wetlands we have are associated with rivers. They have wetlands on the fringe of the flowing water. Our larger rivers have wetlands associated with the floodplain or the area nearby the river that the river periodically floods into. Or maybe you get some, some high changes in the groundwater level that creates those wetland areas along the river. Some of the rivers that arise here, especially out of the sand hills, arise from groundwater from the Ogallala Aquifer. They're influenced by groundwater and also by rainfall. Some of the rivers also have this source of water coming out of the mountains as the snow melts. Wetlands are everywhere across Nebraska. They're different from season to season, year to year, and as you travel across the state, they're very different. And so that, to me, is something that's just a wonderful thing to be able to experience. We're out in far western Nebraska, just a few miles from the Wyoming border and the Panhandle, and we're along the North Platte River. Across this broad floodplain, you have lots and lots of meadow areas and sloughs and other wetlands associated with the North Platte River. Its flow is quite controlled by a series of dams upstream, dams that are both for flood protection but also for irrigation. Because of that, there are fewer wetlands out on the floodplain than there historically were. Along the North Platte River, you have freshwater wetlands. There's also alkali wetlands. So these alkali wetlands, they're within the historic floodplain of the river. Through wet dry cycles, those salts in the soils continue to accumulate on the surface. You know, you have that different invertebrates to different insects to different plants. That really provides great habitat for shorebirds, wading birds, waterfowl. It's this mix of all these different types of wetlands that really make this landscape unique. We're on the property that Dry Spotted Tail Creek runs through. Historically it was ditched under the idea of drying out some of these riparian areas so that they could be farmed. Ducks Unlimited and Trout Unlimited I and mean, Preby got together and you know came up with this idea of you know, could we check up the water within this ditch and get it back up onto the surface of the meadow and create a new stream path for it. We'll stick to these historic features on the landscape, focusing on these low spots, putting in as much natural curve and add some features to it to, you know, kind of mimic what you might see on a natural meandering stream.
The straight stretch of stream or river is not biologically productive as a stream in a more natural condition. They took that stream that had been straightened and they moved it into a new course that's longer, that has more interaction with the floodplain, and they put these bends in it. And a lot of different kinds of fish and wildlife really benefit from, from that diversity of habitat that happens when you have a stream that is more in a natural meandering, winding state. These wetlands that are associated with our deeper water rivers and streams and lakes are really important from a fishery standpoint. They're the nursery grounds for the fish. That's where the eggs hatch. That's where the young fish hang out and grow and then move out into the deeper water where anglers might catch them in the, the future. And you've got to meet the needs of all the life cycles of that fish. A majority of people in Nebraska get their drinking water from water that's associated with rivers. When that water flows into those wetlands, it comes out cleaner and better for human use downstream. We all want clean water and abundant water and wetlands play a surprisingly important role in helping improve water quality. On the spotted tail complex, we're building a wetland that is going to be catching some tail water off of an agricultural field. That water will come through vegetation, filter out sediments before it gets to the wetland itself. The wetland then will hold it. And that whole time it's moving through that sand gravel, it's getting filtered, it's getting cleaned up. And so when it actually exposes back to the surface in the North Platte River, you have some pretty clean water compared to what ran off the parking lot or ag field a half mile away. There's a lot of other benefits that we get from wetlands being on the landscape and it's worth restoring and protecting. These wetlands are a hotspot for biodiversity. My name is Emma Brindley Buckley, and I am a researcher uh, with the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Uh, my name's uh, Andy Caven, and I'm the director of research at the Crane Trust. We study the responses of species of concern to manage and natural disturbances in the Platte River ecosystem. The Platte River arises out of the mountains in uh, Colorado and Wyoming. The South Platte comes out of Colorado and uh, into the, the southwest part of Nebraska and meets the North Platte River near the town of North Platte. The North Platte and the South Platte are joined and become the, the Platte River that flows on across the, the rest of Nebraska. Our little cabin, we have 20 legs, two cats, two dogs, and us. We are fortunate enough to live right here on the river. A lot of our research takes place in the Central Platte. One of my favorite things is going out with Andy when they're doing fish seining. So going out to the sloughs and being able to look at the diversity of these small fish that are existing in these crazy wetlands out in, in the middle of a prairie and being able to get into the water and sit down in the mud and sift through the, the muck and look for aquatic macroinvertebrates. 
but let's create this connection between the terrestrial landscape and the aquatic ecosystem. The wet meadows and a lot of the wetlands in the Central Platte are hydrologically connected to the river. Our goal is, is to capture a number of the habitats within these slough systems so we can look at the composition of fish over time in relation to our management. The key thing to manage is to make sure the condition of wet meadows are appropriate for crane migration. Nebraska is at the heart of the central flyway. A lot of our waterfowl congregate here during migration. Uh, Sandhill cranes that come through use that central flyway on their way up to the breeding grounds. The plat is this continentally important. It's not just important in Nebraska. So one of my first uh, experiences seeing the sandhill cranes, I didn't know what to expect going out to a blind on the river and it's dark and you don't use headlamps and we're getting in this box. And as the sun comes up over the river, it goes from dark and dead quiet and gradually the sound increases until there's just an orchestra. They are one of the most prehistoric, almost dinosaur looking creatures that I think I've ever seen. It's still one of the last great migrations in the world and all the conservation work is trying to sustain that. Wetlands are very, very productive. So they have lots and lots of food sources that food being present is what attracts that migrating wildlife to use these riverine wetlands along their migratory journey. I view them as kind of like, from a human perspective, we think of rest stops along the interstate. You need to rest, you need to get some fuel to continue your journey uh, when we travel. Well, wildlife are seeking the same thing. There's something about this landscape that is unexpected and it's something you have to immerse yourself in and get into to appreciate that and just see how drastically variable it is. Let's just go back to sixth grade. Where does that sixth grade brain want to go? Well, it wants to go to the wetland. That's where you're going to find something cool. The Loop River system, those rivers flow out of the sand hills into the central part of the state. They converge and join up with the Platte River near the town of Columbus. In Nebraska, we had roughly 30 mussel species in the state. Now that we've dammed up rivers, there's less than 10 that are thriving. There's six or eight that we would like to try to release in the next 10 years. Right now we've done two, the pocketbook and the fat mucket. You know, a lot of people say, well, why do you want to raise them? They're part of the native landscape. They deserve to be here. They're a great indicator species of the environment and how it is doing. And so they're an important part of the ecosystem that a lot of people don't know about. You know, hopefully we can bring some of those back. And the reproductive cycle of a mussel in and of itself is phenomenal that they can even exist. For the most part, the freshwater mussels in Nebraska require fish as a host species for their young. They typically use a way to attract the fish to bite them, and when they do, they release their glochidia, or immature mussels, onto the fish. Most of them try to adhere to the gills of the fish, where they actually ride around as a parasite for the first two to three weeks of their life. And as they metamorphosize into a mussel, then they drop off of the fish. So when we're making them, 
we put fish in them in the same container and we allow them to attach to the fish. We don't want to harm the fish, but we do want to get as many on as we can. We hold the fish for two weeks roughly and the mussels will drop off the fish. And they're really tiny. All the mussels we put a glue dot on. We also put pit tags on us 10 to 20% that are going into a stream. And that allows us to go in there and find a portion of those mussels. We are stocking a few streams in the sand hills. Oh, oh, oh you hit it. I see. Right there. Oh, I found him. Work. Measuring total length, there's the pit tag that we put on it. There's the one glue dot. The other glue dot migrated. Yeah, it did. Still migrating. Right. That was cool though. I mean, that's, I've never, it's a big old peat, peat moss bed right here. And, I mean, I can stick my hand clear down in it. And he was buried in it, just sitting there, just siphoning like they're supposed to. That's what he was in, was that kind of stuff right there. Pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Back on large, so. Yep, I got you, you're eating. Fringe wetlands are highly productive. A lot of organic matter gets produced there. So those fringes are very important for food production. They're very important for things like macroinvertebrates. Vegetation along streams even provides a food source for things like freshwater mussels. Mussels do serve a very similar purpose to riverine wetlands. They're both trapping sediment, they're trapping nutrients. I mean, the wetlands are growing vegetation and everything that's utilizing that nutrients so it isn't going straight into the river. The mussels, you know, they clean tremendous amounts of water every day if, if they're in high enough numbers. It's been a fun project. We've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into it. We're out here seeing something that most people don't even know exists out here, so that's pretty cool. Every day is different on the Nybro River. It starts out in Wyoming as basically a puddle you can jump over. And it really picks up speed as it comes across Nebraska. My name's Amy Kutra. I am the Smith Falls State Park Superintendent. People before I was born had the foresight to protect this area so I could enjoy it. I really hope that that kind of attitude can continue on so people many years down the road can enjoy it like we are. Gordon Warwick contributed a lot to informing people about the different species and really the reasons why this river is so special. He particularly contributed to helping us protect the hybrid aspen tree. There's always wetlands associated with the floodplain of a river and the Niobrara is no exception. And there's not a lot of physical space for wetlands. But there are some where these spring branch canyons run out onto whatever floodplain there is. They're really important because they add a tremendous amount of diversity. And that aquifer that sits in the sand hills is flowing out. These canyons erode. It funnels the water in and consolidates it in a creek or a stream. Those small streams are really important biologically because 
they feed the larger streams and wetlands. There is so much diversity, there's so many stories to tell. So there's no end to you know, what you can learn and study here about all of these species that are interacting. Both the aspen trees and the birch trees have persisted since the last ice age. They're both dependent on these unique, narrow microclimates that occur along about a 40 mile span of the Middle Navarro River Valley. The river had become more than a livelihood to me, it's a way of life. It is something that we're all very proud of to have open skies, clean water, fresh air. It's a powerful way of living. And I think that more people that can come out here and experience that will realize that that's something that we need to protect and preserve for all time. Right now, we are in the wetlands of Fontenelle Forest in Bellevue, Nebraska. This right here is a floodplain that's attached directly to the Missouri River. Fontenelle Forest is actually connected to places as far west as Idaho and as far east as St. Louis, Missouri, or even down to the Gulf of Mexico. And that's all because of this Missouri River watershed. Fontenelle Forest is one of the oldest privately owned nature preserves in the entire country. The wetlands here at Fontenelle Forest is kind of a hidden treasure, but I wish it wasn't so hidden. I wish more people knew about how accessible these places are to them. One of my favorite things that keeps me coming back to the floodplain here is not only just how beautiful it is, but also American toads. And it's my happy place to come out here and follow these toads around, as ridiculous as that may seem. Everyone needs a hobby, and I guess toads are mine. So about four years ago, I started putting together this series of images on white backgrounds that I've come to call Floodplain. And the Floodplain Project is all about documenting the biodiversity of the Missouri River and its surrounding floodplain. The tagline for this project is a clear view of life in the Big Muddy. We produced 50 of these sidewalk decals that each one of them had a different species that's native to the Missouri River or its watershed printed on them, as well as facts about those animals and a link to a website where you could learn more about them. This was put all along the Bob Carey Pedestrian Bridge, which is right in the heart of Omaha. The thing about the floodplain project is that I don't know if I'm ever going to be done with it. It's like a sweater that has a little piece of thread hanging off of it. The more you pull, the more it seems to unravel, but there just keeps on coming more and more and more. I think wetlands are incredibly important, not only for their ecological services, but also for our own mental well-being. We need these kinds of places to let go a little bit and to reconnect with nature. If there's one thing you can do to learn more about this watershed, just get out there, 
and explore it a little bit. We as a society, we need to understand that this river will flood on occasion and that we need to provide these opportunities for these floodplains to exist and not completely constrain it. And that may mean reevaluating how we manage our water resources coming from this Missouri River. The stake of entire species are at risk depending on how we manage this river. It's not a simple solution. There are no easy answers, but I think it's something that we definitely need to pay attention to in the coming years.